Hello everybody and welcome to the CSCI podcast. Uh, we are here today on behalf of ARU speaking to the legendary Simon Gogley. I'm here with Alex Camp. My name's Robert Baker uh, and we're going to be simply just, interviewing. Just having a few questions. Having, having a, a little, chat. A little chat. Um, chat. How are you, Simon? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? You had a nice summer? Yeah, been pretty decent. How's yours? Um, yeah, it's good. Do you get on to anything particularly exciting? Well, I did a summer school here, which uh, Very cool. I guess yeah. you know about Alex because you were yeah, involved in where for James, who are our course accreditors, and uh, we used one of the ARU bands, Pink Lemonade, mm. and recorded an EP with them, so that was good fun. Yeah, very enjoyable. And, you know, had a little bit of a holiday as well. Don't blame you. Why Why not? Not? Always <laughs> needed. Always and, needed. And lots of marking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I suppose we should kick it off with our first question here. We were going to put to you, uh, we, we'd ask you to talk about where where did it all start for you? You know, yeah, the whole sort of progression into leading up to now, I suppose. Well, that's a pretty long story, but <clears throat> um, in terms of where it started, um, well, back when I first started doing this kind of thing, there weren't any courses like this, like audio music technology or anything like that to uh, to take... Uh, I think there may be one or two private ones, but um, the kind of standard route into into recording studios was to become a like an apprentice T boy, basically, and work your way up through the system. And <clears throat> I didn't really know how to do that. I didn't come from a a family of uh, musicians or anything like that, or anybody working in those areas. So I actually was more into art and design. So I went to college to do theatre design. Wor- worked in that for a while, but I was I was in bands at the time in London, and as we progressed with making demos, I learned how to use four tracks, that sort of thing, and uh, I ended up getting a job with a hire company called Audio Rents that um, rented studio equipment, microphones, classic valve microphones, things like that, to to sessions. Um, which was a great thing to do because I kind of I, I got to travel around all the studios in London. There were a lot of them at the time. This we were talking kind of mid eighties, and there must have been at least thirty, forty studios in London at the time, all kind of quite high level ones. So, so I, I got to know where they all were, got to know a lot of the people in them, and then when a when a job came up at one that was quite close by, Mayfair Studios, um, they asked me if I'd like to uh, if I'd like to join. So that was my routine, just kind of getting to know people in the first place. Very cool. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, whilst we're on the subject of your career, mm. um, I know it might be a bit of a weird thing to ask someone, but like, do you know how many actual awards you've accrued? The whole time of all your... All your yeah, all of them. <laughs> um, your work. Well, I'm not sure I, I got all of them in terms of, you know from all over the world and stuff, but the UK ones, um, I, I've got about 15 or 16 uh, platinum and gold records, that sort of thing, Mo- mainly UK ones, a couple of American ones, one Russian one, but I'm sure there are probably ones that I could have tried to collect from <laughs> <laughs> yeah. around the world, but obviously, you know, don't exactly, I'd have to spend all my time doing that probably. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, but obviously the big one was um, a Grammy Award, yeah. that I got um, for working with UT. So that's kind of the pride of place. Are there any other favourites that sort of up there that you're quite proud of? Or um, Yeah, well, the same year that the, the, the U2 album was nominated for Album of the Year, the, uh, I w- I'd worked on Gwen Stefani's first solo album, and that was nominated as well, So, nice. which was good because I m- m- had to kind of double the chance of <laughs> winning. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> complain of that. And um, so, I, yeah, I really enjoyed working with her. I particularly enjoyed working with um, No Doubt. You know, she's the singer from No Doubt. And uh, I worked on their album before that called Rock Steady. And that was a great session because the, the whole band were in. It was kind of one of the later albums that I remember working on where um, the studio was always full of people. It seemed over recent years, it's kind of got more fractured. People tend right. to work more on their own. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
you know, send each other files and that kind of stuff. It's all element by element almost. Kind of. And um, I sort of missed that that whole thing. When I first started, it was very much a studio full of people. Mm. You, know, you had a, and, and a different person doing each job. So, um, and and that collaborative aspect, I think, is is really important. And it's, it's very creative. It kind of... Um, I think you get the best out of people and people bounce ideas off each other. And it's very difficult to do that when you're working remotely. Yeah, um, no input. Yeah, you don't you don't get that sort of one-to-one thing going on um, that you get when you're in the same room with somebody. And I think that's that's um, something that I'd, I'd like to see people getting back to more. And I'm, I certainly try and encourage people to collaborate when they're working on projects here yeah that's certainly something i've felt as a, as a student this year yeah um it's it's all been a, it's been very collaborative been a team effort and it's definitely been a positive experience for me yeah, um, so the same uh, but speaking of positive experiences we were going to ask what you've enjoyed uh most about your time here at aiu so far well um well i enjoyed uh, I enjoy all the different modules I'm doing. Some of them have been more difficult than others because I've had to kind of dive in a bit at the deep end with one or two. Um, but I guess the portfolio modules that I run in the in the final year are probably the most satisfying ones because they're kind of quite open-ended um, and I usually start off uh, with them asking the students what it is they feel that they haven't covered yet right. or, or what they're missing and what they feel they need in order to progress out into a, a professional career. And then um, then we try and cover those areas as much as possible. Um, and having got a lot of industry experience, obviously I can bring in a lot of knowledge about um, what it's like to work pro- professionally and what sort of things they should be trying to do, the kind of people they should be trying to get in contact with, all that sort of thing. And I can occasionally bring some of those people in to talk to them um, and do little master classes and things like that, and then we we cover areas where um, a, quite a few of the students will feel like they've missed out on something or they haven't quite understood something through the course of the, of the three years. Mm-hmm. So we can go back and recover those things and revise them with from a different angle, yeah, and stuff. So it, it's good in that it's it's not totally fixed. I've got a bunch of things that I that I cover or I think are good to cover for, for people, but um, I try and make it as student-led as possible. Wonderful. Um, I, I Would you say student-led things are sort of better for the student rather than...? Well, uh, I, I think so, because I think it's um, it's like an exercise we did last year where, where I, I got you to get involved in the assessment process and, and setting the parameters of how stuff gets marked. And I think if the students feel that they're involved in that and they're having a say in it then they'll be much happier with the end results yeah yeah, I'm um, satisfied with it. yeah and and likewise with the subject matter i mean obviously in the first and second years we're kind of covering a lot of stuff that needs to be needs to be covered and there's a syllabus and so on but by the time you get to the third year it's supposed to be much more student-led so the idea of of getting them to um define what it is they want to cover it means that they're getting what they want from the course rather than me saying why we have to do this and this and this um which some of them would be interested in but not necessarily all of them and i I found it's been really positive because um in terms of the quality of the work that they come up with at the end there's there's definitely been a, a you know you can see an improvement happening through those portfolio modules um hopefully as a direct result of doing that and people doing a lot more of their own projects as well. And we're going to increase that as we go. Um, for example, next uh, trimester after, in the new year, we're going to uh, do one project where we'll be collaborating with um, one of the other departments in CSCI, the um, animation department. Oh. And, uh, you know, the, there are plans afoot for lots more of that kind of stuff, getting a lot more collaborative things going. Just a way of better experience for people to collaborate rather than well, just yeah. focusing on their own thing. And, and and doing projects which aren't necessarily part of modules um, all the time. Sometimes they will be. They can be things that will count towards your grades, but um, things that uh, you can 
you'll have a sort of finished product that you can add to your CV and, and your portfolio. There's, we're also starting to use a new uh, online portfolio system, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, but <laughs> no it, it, it's brand new, so we're, we're just <coughs> getting used to it. So um, um, there's, there, there's all sorts of things going forward that are, are, are good for kind of what will happen to students after they leave. So employability is a big thing. And that's one of the main reasons I'm here, I suppose, is to be that kind of bridge between the theoretical stuff and the outside world. Yeah, and it, yeah, that's. Um, no, I couldn't agree more. That's great. Um, ah, right. I've got a final question here. <laughs> final question. A final question. Final question. So we're coming up to ten minutes here. We are. A wrap up. <laughs> crossing over. Um, do you have uh, any advice for potential students or? Just anybody looking to get into the industry, just sort of a sign off, if you will, just very general. Um, well, I think it's important these days to to be quite diverse, if possible. Try not to be too narrow in in the kind of things you do. Um, you quite often come across uh, people who are say seventeen, eighteen, who are saying, "All oh, right, well, I'm I make beats, or I I do this, or I just do that," you know, and it's like, well, you should really be trying to do everything as much as possible you can keep your options open and try lots and lots of different things because um i did think it's more important than ever now to have a quite a kind of wide range of skills if you're going to have a, a a career in professional audio you need to be able to do more than one type of stuff not yeah. just studio work for example so um there's that and the other main thing is just perseverance because it's very easy because uh, it's a you know any kind of creative career is pretty tough mm. There's always a lot of competition. It's difficult to make a decent living and all that kind of stuff. So there's always the temptation at times to, uh, you know, jack it in or just yeah. turn it into a hobby or whatever it may be. But um, I think the key thing is just to, to stay persistent. Wonderful. Perfect. Well, well, thank you very much, Simon. Yes, thank you, Simon. No problem. It's been wonderful chatting with you. And um, thanks to the listeners, I suppose. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much for joining us on the CSCI podcast today.